Hey everybody, it's Uncle John from Your Story Hour, and we're ready to bring you another chapter from the book Eeny Meeny Miny Mo and Still Mo by author Sam Campbell. Today we're getting into chapter number five, and it's entitled God Be With You, Duke. The morning after the jailbreak of the squints, there was a different spirit in our group. It was the day of which we had said little and which we would have delayed coming if we could. Duke's manner was changed. His face still lighted with good humor, and his conversation dealt with the usual pleasantries. But there were demanding matters at hand, and occasionally his brow wrinkled as ideas presented themselves for his attention. Duke, my boy, I said, walking up to his chair and laying my hand on his shoulder. Sitting down, he was almost as tall as I was standing. Duke, this is it. Yes, he said seriously, though he could not refrain from a little laugh. Yes, this is it. We move up today. Do you dread going, lad? I asked. We had avoided talking of the time when his leave would end and the war would confront him. But it was here now and must be faced. No, I mean it when I say I do not. We knew he spoke the truth. For pleasure, I would not choose the experience before me, certainly. But there is a job to be done, a job that is partly mine. I am ready now to be part of it. And no bitterness, I asked? He was thoughtful for a moment. No bitterness, he said with conviction. Still Mo taught me that. He took no time to lay blame or curse his luck when, when misfortune came to him. It was liberty he wanted, and it was all that mattered. He could have lost the joy of liberty had he stopped to count the cost. Last night, the picture was clear to me. The human race is in a cage, imprisoned by its own ignorance. All about us is a world rich in beauty and natural loveliness. Some of us can see beyond the wires of tangled thinking that hold us in. We see how happy and fine the race could be outside. We have to be, we have to lead in a break for this liberty. And even if some of us are hurt in the attempt, the hurts themselves may help bring freedom to all. <laughs> I don't know just what that parable makes of me, I laughed, shuddering a little as I recalled that I had pinched the tail off Stilmo. Yet, I like it. Look out in the forest, Duke. There isn't a creature living but would rather die than surrender liberty. Freedom is a primitive instinct in nature. Something in our constitutions will never let us be content until all men are free. We cannot be satisfied otherwise, even if we would. And I guess if we do leave strips of our hides behind in our struggle, it's worth the price. We left Duke to himself very much that day. He seemed to want to be alone with nature. He scouted the island until he had located and fed the squints. We heard him laughing and talking to them. Chipmunks came in for attention, climbing all over him, while he donated peanuts by the handful to their insatiable appetites. Salt and Pepper arrived for a romp, and Sausage amused him with another demonstration of her chewing. Bluey entered the scene, eyeing the red squirrels with suspicion and probably conjuring up plans for making their lives miserable. Duke put out in a canoe, and cruising along the shores, we saw him land and disappear up a trail. An hour later, he returned and took up his canoeing again. Apparently, he was gathering thoughts into his mind to carry away as much of this loved experience as he could. Dinner time came, and Duke presented himself in uniform. His boyishness was gone, and he reflected the dignity of his rank and the seriousness of his purpose. In that, dinny, in that dinner, Jenny had incorporated every favorite dish of our soldier guest. Soon afterward, it was time to go and we carried Duke's baggage to the boathouse. Just a moment, he said, holding up a finger. Forgot something. And he ran back toward the cabin. He was gone a few minutes, and then returned in a great hurry. Now let's get started. I mustn't miss that train. He grabbed his suitcase and started to step into the boat. My suspicions were aroused. No, you don't, young fella, I said, looking at him knowingly. Just put that suitcase down. Why, he said, trying to look innocent, you wouldn't want me to miss the train, would you? Regardless of the train, there is nothing in the military manual that permits an officer to do kidnapping, I said relentlessly. 
You are acting mighty suspicious, Captain, and I'd like to take a look at your pockets before you go. There was a peculiar bulge in each side pocket of his jacket, and occasionally the bulges wiggled a little. Okay, he said resignedly. If that's the way you're going to treat me, here you are. He reached in one pocket and drew out Mo. The little fellow looked and acted as if he wouldn't mind going along. He sat on the ground where Duke placed him, making no effort to run. Old dirty puss, ejaculated Duke. You'd never pass inspection that way, young fella. And now, he said, turning to me, may we go? Not on your life, I said firmly. Come on, cough up. You have some more sins to confess. Duke looked at me pleadingly for a moment and then reluctantly reached into another pocket and pulled out Eeny. He took his little favorite over to a nearby tree and, after petting her a moment, placed her on a limb. "'Yes, you can't go, old top,' he said to the tiny squirrel. "'But you'll wait for me now. I'm going to need you again one of these days.' I searched Duke, but he had no more squirrels. "'I couldn't find the others,' he said in needless explanation." From the hour of his coming, we had been in agreement with Duke that there should be no sorrow at parting. Goodbye should be said only in the original meaning of the words. Accordingly, as he stepped on the train at the tiny village eleven miles from our sanctuary, Jenny and I said, God be with you, Duke. God be with you, my friends, he replied with a strong smile. And that's the end of chapter five. Come back tomorrow, and Aunt Nikki is going to bring you chapter number six, which is entitled, When the Dumb Speak. Find out what that's talking about tomorrow. Bye-bye.